Welcome to another um, New Tech Light Wave video tutorial from VF20 Designs. Today I'm going to attempt as fast as I can to make um, a vase like this using Modeler and then rendering it out with some surface effects with Light Wave. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and open Modeler and I need to configure my display area, so I'm going to hit D which will bring up my viewports and I'm actually going to go ahead and I like to work actually in the quad view um, alright and the next thing I'd like to do is here in this viewport actually load um, an image into the background so in the bottom left load an image I'm going to find the vase and then I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of it just so it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, that should work. And then I'm going to simply go through and use the disk tool. So under the create menu, you can go to disk and I'm going to start by just creating a disk that I'm going to definitely have to resize. So let me center this up. And go ahead put this kind of somewhere in the middle. So the disk is actually just going to be starting point to which I can then bevel. So looking at this here, the cool thing is we can kind of just work in one window. So um, what I'm going to do is in my polygon mode, I'm going to go ahead and circle everything from the center, increase the size where I stretch it horizontal horizontal and vertical I have to give it a little bit more stretch this way so it's equal so that actually needs our outside sides here and here now that I have that kind of matched perfectly what I'm going to do is just select this top polygon and then using the B which is for bevel I can actually just go through and really quickly B, hit B again, B, hit B again, and kind of go through and create the shape really quickly. And I don't have to worry about the proportions in the left and right view. I'm going to go ahead and come in for this little kind of neck area, bring it up, back out. Center this up, B again. And for right now, I'm going to stop. And then, um, taking my viewports back to normal, see that I already have this kind of shape. Now, selecting the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. B, bevel this down, hit B again, the bevel, B again, the bevel, B to B select, B again, the bevel, and then I'm going to have to kind of estimate this split here, so going over into this view, something like this. So, already we have a shape that's like this. It's just pulled from a disk. Now, what I would do at this point is normally go through and create um, the inside of it. And to do that, we can just enlarge this view, go to bevel again, and the trick here is kind of mirroring the inside, the outside uh, 
path that you've kind of already made. Stretch this back up. Hit A to equal all the screens, and we have a vase. What I'm going to go ahead and do is S and go ahead and save that on my desktop as vase. And that's the first one, right? Now, the next thing that we'd like to focus on is to sub patch this, we're going to get an error. So I'll go ahead and hit tab and then try to sub patch it. Only faces with three or four vertices can be converted to sub patches. So, what we're kind of seeing here is this top and the bottom disk that we kind of started with is what's generating this error. Um, it's actually 24 or 48, I think, um, different points that make up this shape. So what we want to do is to get a really smooth kind of sub-patching. Um, we're just going to merge these points. So I'm going to bevel it one more time and bring it in. Let me go ahead and select that. Bevel that one more time and bring that in to a center area. And then I'm just going to use the H or the stretch tool to kind of bring it all as close as possible. And I'm going to try to get this centered to the best of my ability. Now, at this point, I'm going to move over to my points view and I'm going to go ahead and select these points. Hitting M, I'm going to merge them together. 19 points eliminated. And got a couple more points. M, I'm just going to increase the size there. One point eliminated. So now that is actually all triangles. So making this up are going to be polygons that are either. Um, four-sided squares, um, or the actual triangles now that we've made in the bottom. And what I can do is, is go ahead, take this point, select my points again, click this point, and I'm probably going to have to bring that, uh, hit T to move that a little bit so it makes it a little bit more smooth, something like that. Okay, now we're still going to get the sub patch error for the same thing here in the bottom. So if I go and actually select in my polygons this as well, it's going to generate an error. So, same thing, I'm going to stretch them together as close as possible and then center it as close as possible. So now go to my points view, select these points, M to merge them, give it some. Um, distance there. 20 points were emerged together. There's still four left. So selecting those four, I'm going to M, merge those together again. Three points eliminated, so we should have just one point left. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is to create this kind of surface where it has this white bottom and this wood texture at the top. I need to kind of make a new surface. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to go ahead and circle these polygons. So on the inside and outside we have this. And then just by hitting Q, I can create a new surface. Now note, there's already a surface called default for a light wave object. So if you want to make a new surface, default will now be the bottom and we can actually just call this top and we do not want to make that the default and if we feel so inclined we can kind of set the initial color and okay so what we have is something that's I'm just going to create like a box this. and what I'm looking for here is to create like mm, kind of a rectangle 
and then by hitting in it brings up numerics and I can actually do um, X Y and Z segments so I'm going to give this a lot of um, segments this way and I'll show you why so my box is okay and I'll close in and then kind of what we're looking for here with this ramp is to curve it up slowly so at some point I'm just gonna make sure my polygons circle this kind of background part and I'm just by hitting Y I'm slowly starting to rotate click Y off of it deselect and I'm just going to repeat that process Y rotate Y select maybe two Y deselect two Y and keep going until I actually have what looks like uh, half of a half pipe or skateboard or something like that so now we actually have this kind of ramp in which we can set objects to render I'm going to go ahead and hit tab on that and curve that out so it's smooth and then go ahead and hit S to save that as my ramp. Okay, so I've sub-patched. I'm going to hit tab and sub-patch uh, my base so it's smoothed out. The next thing I need to do is open the scene editor. Um, now, here's the basic layout of the scene editor. First thing we want to do is load our objects. So I'm going to go ahead and load um, the ramp first. So I'm going to load the ramp and it's going to look something like this. What I'm going to go ahead and do is drag this back a little bit to where if our object is going to sit right, uh, one second, right here on this area, this will be fine. I'm going to go ahead and hit e enter, create a keyframe at zero for this selected item and we're good to go. Our ramp is good. Now we want to file, load object, and we want our vase. So, one of the things that I didn't do is I didn't actually, um, and this is a good opportunity to show you this, is that this isn't actually saved on the baseline. So if I go up, save this now, go back, that'll fix if you actually have the hub open and it connects the two back and forth. So, this is kind of set up nice. One of the things I also like to do in here, go ahead and save this, make a scene. I'll just call my scene, scene. And um, I want to go ahead and also hit D. And then I want, you know, at least two views. You can do more, but I need at least, uh, let's go ahead and just do three. So, one thing that I would like to have is a perspective view here which I can actually make uh, this the perspective view. And I need a camera view to see what my camera is actually seeing. And I'm going to also need a light view. So going to my camera view, the kind of the neat thing is I can select on camera. And then just by hitting T, I'm actually selected on the camera and I'm moving as the camera. So what I want to do is kind of move this, hit Y to rotate it, and set up kind of a nice... Uh, composition for this vase. So I'm still on my camera, hit enter. I'm going to create a keyframe for my camera at zero. Now, kind of seeing how the ramp looks in here, my perspective view, I know that I'm going to need to do some sizing there. So I'm going to go down to my objects, click on my ramp, and then I'm going to do my stretch. So stretching it this way as well as this way and the rationale here is to get kind of a smooth transition in the background and then I'm just going to hit T to remove this and so we have something like this create enter for zero and then you can see uh, after I create this keyframe that I have this kind of nice fade that's going off into the distance here 
Now the next thing I need to do to set up the scene really quick is actually select on my lights. And I only have one light right now. In my light view, I'm going to hit T as my light and move my light up. So my light, what I find is best for just kind of a simple, quick and easy is to kind of do cross lighting. So I'm going to set this slightly above and rotate it down a little bit. Create enter to make a keyframe for this. And this is where I go into the item properties for the lights. I'm only going to make it 50%. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm actually going to clone this. And while I'm actually selected on the lights, I'm going to uh, go to my objects and clone current item. I'm going to clone it once. And then now I have actually two lights. I'm on light two. And as light two, I'm going to move to this other side, rotate around, and kind of set up this kind of neat cross lighting for it. Uh, go ahead and make my keyframe and now if I move this the scene is set up we're good to go at this point I just want to hit S save it and our basic scene okay, is set so up. at this point what we can do is go ahead and set up some basic rendering options so what I'd like to do is just go to rendering go to render options and see what we got going on here um, first off I like to see the rendering in progress and I like to see the finished result so Otherwise, you won't see it in progress, or you won't see a little pop-up at the end that shows your image. So enable that. And then another thing we may want to do is doing your ray trace shadows, reflections, refractions, and transparency. Knowing we're not going to have any transparency, I'm not going to um, enable that. And a refraction of light, I'm going to kind of um, not deal with at this point. We may have some refraction, though. So um, we're good with that. And then at this point, under the camera options, you can actually do additive sampling and anti-aliasing. At this point, we do not want to mess with any of that because we want our rendering to be as quick as possible. So, saving again. I'm going to go ahead and hit F9. And it'll go through and do my first kind of render. So, I like to leave this open. And then this way I can actually see as I'm changing options what's changing. So, this is not bad for a first render. Um, some things that I can go ahead and do is under my service editor we have the ramp and the vase so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the ramp this gray but for the vase um, for the default which is the gray and the top selecting both of them with shift select and I'm just gonna enable smoothing and what that's going to do as you can see here is smooth that out another thing is since this is going to be an actual vase um, there's probably going to be a couple of different things going on here. Some specularity is going to make it receive a little bit of light. I also like to have a little bit of glossiness on there. Maybe take that down and maybe put a little ref reflection on that. Um, so, and since it's um, a clay, I'm going to diffuse it a little bit. And we can kind of adjust these. Now, here for the default, this is going to be white. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change now. So now that I've done this, I can go ahead and hit F9 again, which is what I've set up, and it will go ahead and render through. So, starting to get something a little bit better. Um, default, I'm going to just enable the smoothing on the ramp, and then um, what I want to do is maybe change the camera position a little bit at this point, kind of make it off the side. So go ahead and close this, click on my camera, and then for my camera I just kind of think I want to do something a little bit more dramatic. Reposition this something like Maybe position more on the side, rotate it in. Maybe even actually a little bit up more and rotate it down. Let me go ahead and make a keyframe for this at zero. Okay, and 
just render again. So this way we can see some of the reflection from the ramp, as well as the shadow goes off in a different direction, um, looking better. So, at this point, um, I would suggest um, maybe going through and for the vase, um, kind of referring back to our picture. Um, we have this kind of nice white here, but the gloss up here is a little bit higher. So I would uh, go ahead and take down some of the diffusing from this default. That's actually a little bit more white. And then the top part, give it a little bit more kind of specularity and maybe a little less uh, kind of a little bit more gloss. So just seeing how that affects I'm just going to hit F9 again. Good. And then one of the things I like about the keeping this image viewer up is you can actually kind of go back to this image before versus now. This is something much more what we like. So now the next thing is to get this wood texture here at the top. And to do that, um, what we're going to do is go into the default at the top and actually create a um, uh, actual uh, a texture there and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, the best way to do this would be a UV texture map or um, you could even work with procedural textures but um, what I'm going to show you today is how to actually just load as an image here. Um, I found this online which is this nice kind of wood texture and we're going to try to have that wrap around and alter it as we need. So, um, where the collar is in the surface editor for the top, I'm going to hit the texture. And this is where you can actually add image maps, procedural textures, or gradients. So we want an image map. I'm actually going to load um, the image as a cylindrical image, since this is a cylinder. And the image will be this wood. So, just by default, since I have this, I'm going to just test this to see how it renders, F9. So we have something like this. Um, now what we want to do here is align this right, fix the spacing, and make it work for this object. So. Um, in the texture editor, you can work with the texture access. What we want is something like Y, so it actually rotates around this way. Another thing is, is similar to Photoshop, you have blending mode options for each layer. So you can additive, subtractive, difference, multiply layers, all these kind of a different effects. So I'm going to multiply this layer and Render this and see what we got with what we have so far. So something that's really so not bad. At this I point. would say maybe increase our spacing a little bit and add some white in there, and we're good to go. So going back in here, what I'm going to do is um, create another layer. In this layer, I'm going to actually make it an image map layer, load the same image, make it cylindrical, map it on the Y, but then I'm going to actually change its scale. So what this is in effect doing is um, it's multiplying the layer underneath of it. So I think this is good, and I want to change my base color, I think, to something maybe a little bit more white. Maybe a, a little bit more orange, but a lighter color. Let me go ahead and do a render of this with F9. Oh, 
Okay, so I can live with that. And then at this point, what we want to do is set up for a final render. Um, so inside of uh, the camera menu, you can go to your anti-aliasing, and this will do a couple different paths. I'm going to just do a medium, enable additive sampling, and go ahead and set up a render. And it will actually do a couple different passes, and you won't get this pixelated version. You'll get a nice mapped image version of the object. And then another thing we may want to do is at this point is change the camera at the last minute and even look at see how smooth that is compared to what was made before. Is maybe look at um, altering the camera view one last time. So here in the camera I'm going to go ahead and do a rotate here something that's a little bit more rule of thirds, create a keyframe here, and do our final render. Now with the ramp you can you know definitely put a pedestal on there or make the ramp white itself or however you want, but this is kind of just the basics of building kind of a first object in a possibly a still life and rendering it out and actually having it texture mapped. Um, and there you go. That's um, the beginning to end step of how to create a vase. Um, thanks for um, following BF20 Designs on YouTube and be sure to check back with us for more tutorials.